Welcome to The Advocate, a new episode to touch on issues troubling humanity around the globe. We'll be looking at international events and those close to, our, to us, our dear Niger. This episode promises to be more engaging with expected feedback from you, our esteemed viewers. And remember, no old bad. Local government autonomy, US politics, hunger policy. In a landmark decision, the Nigerian Supreme Court has ruled that it is unconstitutional for state governments to control, withhold, or tamper with funds meant for local governments. This historic judgment prohibits any further allocation of local government funds to state governments and mandates that only councils with elected officials can access these funds. Hence, the beginning of local government autonomy in Nigeria. The decision is being hailed as a significant step towards promoting grassroots democracy in Nigeria. As you may know, local governments for years have struggled under the financial and administrative control of state governments, which many argue has stifled their ability to function effectively and deliver services to the people. The Supreme Court's ruling marks the beginning of a long process towards achieving financial independence and accountability for local governments. This profound constitutional change could catalyze further reforms, making local governments more functional and purposeful. This ruling has sparked quick, critical conversations around or across the nation, with many drawing up new expectations for local governance. In a bid to alleviate hunger, the Nigerian federal government has dispatched 20 trucks of rice to each of the 36 states and the federal capital territory. While this move aims to provide immediate relief to the present issue of hunger, and which is indeed commendable, I am of the opinion that this is a temporary fix and does not address the underlying economic problems. Whilst this has raised several critical questions about the long-term solutions to Nigeria's economic challenges, citizens are concerned as to what strategies are in place to ensure that these trucks of rice reach every family or resident in each state. What's the certainty that officials responsible for distribution want to divert these resources for personal gain? Addressing a growing concern that has once again taken center stage, political violence. The tragic shooting of former President Donald Trump highlights an escalating threat that must be condemned and cautioned against. This incident has drawn widespread condemnation from world leaders who emphasize the importance of exercising civic rights without resorting to violence. In the same light, I, Iniki Victoria Modu, joined the global community in condemning political violence. It is crucial to uphold democratic values and ensure that political disagreements are expressed peacefully and respectfully. The recent 2023 election in Nigeria and Nigeria the site were marred by violence, undermining the democratic process. We urge not just the United States and Nigerians, but the global, global community at large to learn from these events and commit to peaceful engagement. Hmm. Wow. Wow. That was huge. Right? Huge, yeah. I would say. Just like you were right. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, let's talk about the local government autonomy. Um, there are several, yeah, there are several, you know, conversations that are sparked as a result of the Supreme Court, you know, decision. Um, I'd like to, you know, hear your view on, you know, the local government autonomy. Okay, so the thing is, uh, it's a lot of persons have divergent view about it. It's a green concern, just like what uh, Chinidu was saying earlier about okay. um, check and balances. But let me say. There was this certain governor, I think that was this week, mm -hmm. earlier this week, Governor Makindi of Ohio State. Yeah, precisely. was like, uh, no, he doesn't agree with this. The truth is, there's rule of law, there's rule of law. Precisely. You cannot, yes, I agree. Yeah, whatever reasons, check and balance. But you can't talk over or try to water down what the Supreme Court has said. Mm -hmm. If they said this, everybody stick to it. I, but yeah. let's see how to manage the process. Mm -hmm. I was saying earlier that, uh, the problem we have in Nigeria is not a strategic problem. Yeah, we agree. We need to review, rejig our mm -hmm. strategy in effective governance. Yeah. But our problem is more of accountability. Is mm -hmm. If you have a good 
if you have a very good strategy and a very poor accountability system, but if you have a very poor strategy and good accountability system, the system can work and still grow. Yeah. So I, I think yeah. that this, um, just as you said, right, accountability, I think that this Supreme Court ruling, you know, now that the local government has an autonomy, well, it's going to, yeah, there's control. going to be transparency, right, as to, you know, pinpointing where leadership issues are. I don't know if you understand. Yeah, like, no, no, be, uh, like yeah. when you said pinpointing, it's the money, it's the finance mm -hmm. that is the issue. Yes. Maybe you have not, but I have seen mm -hmm. as a copper somewhere, okay. I'll not mention the state or anything, seen what local government officials do. It is that sharing of the money in the most localized, Shaki. systematic way. They share money like crayfish. I'm not even joking. Shaki. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. These guys appear at the end of the month when there's a location and they share the money. Having said that, I'm not saying that we should just say, okay, uh, local government should be handicapped or become impotent. We keep talking about checks and, and balances. balances. Yes. Now, uh, just uh, this morning, my friend whose sister is in politics told me that in her place, somewhere up north, um, civil servants are retiring mm. to come and join the race for local government chair, chair, chairmen, chairwomen, whatever. Nobody is actually projecting, okay, now that we have autonomy, these are the things we're going to do. It's just about, it is time. This is my retirement plan. Mm. So how are we as a people in the local, under the local governance, going to make sure that this is not um, a sharing formula no sabotage. for these people? Mm. So are we, how are we going to hold them accountable? Because the government or governance has come home to our communities. Mm -hmm. So how are we, you and I, going to make sure that these people do what they are supposed to do? Mm -hmm. I think that is the concern for some governors. Mm -hmm. but, but then again, that concern is not enough because when they had access to the money, what, do what did they do, do with it? Precisely. So that's, that's my... I'm, me... As a Nigerian, I am just looking at them. Yes, as for me, like you okay. said, as a Nigerian, as for me, I feel um, um, local government attaining autonomy is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. Being an autonomy, because like she said earlier on, checks and balances, they have to put in place. Nigeria has not attained that level yet. Mm -hmm. That's what we say. Exactly, to act independently when are we of the that state level? and the federal sector. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's going to be a problem. Now, at the grassroots level, okay, fine, I understand that they are trying to promote grassroots yeah. you know, the development democracy. and democracy, yeah. but how, how, how accountable can they be? They are not account uh, accountable, even at the federal and state sector, they are not yet accountable. Then, oh, okay. Okay. okay, so that means the focus more should be accountability structure and structure system, and system. That's yeah. the strategy. Exactly. Yes, and it's time for the people, like I say, it's time for the people to own governance mm. because it has come home to them it is it should be easier for you and i to go to our council yes. and say or counselor or whoever and say sir the drainage in my house oh, is not precisely. working so, I think that that's the school one. Mm -hmm. you know there there are some children when they close from secondary school mm -hmm. they're on the streets playing yes yeah. not just playing mm -hmm. disturbing mm -hmm. the peace constituting a nuisance mm -hmm. i can go to my local government chairman and say sir Please, what is happening? Mm -hmm. Without them saying, but, uh, let's look at Abuja uh, or yeah. let's look at uh, the capital. Exactly. These, people, these people, they act like demigods, even at these local government mm. level. Most I of them, you can't approach them. Precisely. I remember some, one of my friends. Yeah. I have a friend who is, um, you know, who is part of the, I don't know if they call him executive now in the local government. And he mm. said that his street is close to the local government street. Gov sorry, local governor, right? Yeah. Street local and government. chairman, yeah. chair, rather. Yeah. Yes. And that's his residential, you know, location. And you don't see him, like, probably when, except the speaker is coming or the governor is coming, you can't access. And he, he mentioned that that's actually a major issue. So your people at the grassroots level cannot access you. And I don't know. So I but think I can have point our, The problem with our leaders, first of all, access. You access. cannot access them mm -hmm. easily. Access. Like take for instance, you want okay, just see their convoys, mm -hmm. local government chairman. 
are supposed to be accessible. You see them convoys, you see them untouchable like mm -hmm. demigods. How can these people lay complaints mm -hmm. and have it at their doorstep and create the change and we have the accountability that we are looking mm -hmm. for? So that is the problem. With certain countries in the world, if you go to countries like US and mm -hmm. UK, you see they are what do you call them? The local, there's a name we call the mayo and those. Oh, yes, those mayo. Who, the local yes. uh, Edelman or something like that. The, the local council. Yes. They always have this like council meeting with their, their local community, certain Member. maybe residents. The residents. Yeah, you see them, they will go. You see how the residents will be holding them accountable. They will even yeah. be pleading, please. Yeah. We can't, so we are sorry. I, I, and then the yeah. resident can even decide to be called. Yes, yes. yes. I think another yeah, thing is, the, the, residents, the, the residents or citizens at the grassroots, grassroots level should be willing to, you know, engage, you know, in governance. Yes, or, yes, you, know, know, you know, I think no, at engagement. Point, because I feel like they, they, sorry to constitution, I feel like they have lost hope, right? So... Um, they don't just want to have anything to do with the government. Oh, uh, they, yeah, you know, there's this political apathy. Exactly, that kind yes. of thing. We are at this exactly. point that we are dead to politics. We yeah. don't want to like in, get involved. Let me just be on my own. Okay, Nigeria we is... feel they are going to do the same thing. And exactly. at the same time, we are so not that's responsible lack of trust as citizens. So, yeah. uh, children, lack of trust. Lack of trust. I've seen this idea she did do. Like, um, Nigerians have this, sorry to see, I don't want to generalize, most or some Nigerians in the local, at the grassroots level, when they see politicians mm -hmm. close to them, the councillor, what they are thinking of is pepper soup and jello fries. Oh. Let's come and see you. Give us something. They are not thinking mm. about shared development. Mm. What do you think Politics. we can do about this? Is it still the same effective me, governance? The, point is, um, the way we have been conditioned as a people has reduced us to the level of mm. just give me Gary, mm. give, give me a wife, rice. and give me this. So the people have been emasculated. We do not exist as a force. Mm. So that is why we feel it's not our business. If I'm nice to him, he's going to give me matches. He's going to give me bread or T-shirts mm -hmm. or a cap at the next election. That is how the people, the power has been divested yes. from the people. Mm -hmm. So if you say we cannot access our local government chairman and his people, it is because we have let them run amok mm -hmm. with power. Mm -hmm. If we choose now as people, if you look at your streets, I think somewhere in America they have things they call street prefects. Mm. Are you serious? Yes. Wow. There's a place where I read a woman who's a street prefect. If street prefects can organize, because you know you will come back to them yeah. during an election. Exactly. And now they, we have social media, so we cannot even let these people go away. Say, sir, as you're doing this, we're taking pictures and we're uploading it. Mm. They will have no choice but mm -hmm. to be accountable to the people. Mm. There's a place in Calabar. Now, I'm not advocating violence. There's a place in Calabar a long time ago. I think one of their local government chairmen, mm -hmm. he kept doing this, you know, the more you look, the more you look, the less you see. The day they caught him, mm. they did, they brought Mr. Do Good. Anybody who has a child, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> Mr. Yes. Yes. they brought Mr. Do Good and handled the situation. Mm. I'm not, a, but I'm saying that our do good is our thumb. Awesome. Mm. What I think the government will need to do that every two years, we need to do an appraisal of this local government chair people mm. and know if they're going to remain in power mm. because they are so close to the people that we can access them. Mm. I say two years, we need performance. Mm. A perfor your report card, we have to see it mm. because it has to be part of our decision that our local government chairman will walk around. Every street chairman should have the number for the local oh, government. Yeah, yeah, yes. Sure. So I think the best way is that if these people are really honest and they are representing parties, and these parties can say to them, look, our success depends directly on, on your performance your and delivery. Yes. So if they do not do well, they will know that they are going to, and they are going to hold this chairman responsible yeah. but yeah. it is left to us to have the courage mm -hmm. to say we put you in power mm -hmm. we can take that power from you mm -hmm. if you do not deliver yeah. wow. but if we do not um, do what we're supposed to do we'll keep telling the stories oh we cannot reach it da, 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 da. and then of course the women i mean the wives of the local governments mm -hmm chair people so and all that. Right. If you see her overdressed, I know what, what the husband is it's earning funny. and she has an enterer. You're going to say, Madam, how is this thing being funded? Mm -hmm. Is there a place in the constitution for the wife 
of the local the government. government True, yeah, true. I, I think the local government or whoever is serving the locals, they should try to live where they are serving. That's first time with that problem. Mm. <laughs> we Some have of to them determine that. Yeah. You know, and, you know yeah. another problem again with that is that over time we've been exposed to political violence and most people are scared to scared. voice out yeah. 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 what true. they feel their opinion. Mm-hmm. Because of yeah. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I think we have a discussion on um, political violence, right? So what do you think about the old Trump's, um, you know, Issue. I know that Elijah is very, very passionate you know, about I, that. I would like to chip in some. <laughs> okay. First of all, no state, no country is immune mm-hmm. to political violence. It all okay. takes about okay. your now, your ideology, mm-hmm. your get and all that and, and all that. For Trump's case, I feel Trump has enemies. Quite all right. Obvious. All, all <laughs> politicians has enemies. Yes, yeah. definitely. Most of the all, <laughs> what he has enemies. You can't <laughs> deny that fact that okay, he has okay. enemies. Okay. But first, the thing is. Is security detail mm. what happened? That's where the question mark is. Right, okay. Is security detail. Take for it. Take, uh, you can imagine the shooter was on the rooftop. Mm-hmm. Why for, when SSS? SSS, SSS, SSS yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Why when security? Yeah. Yeah. I actually saw a clip of someone who said that you know, he was actually calling out, calling the attention of the SSS. Exactly. That, 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 yeah, yeah, that was the exact word. Exactly. The name of Nigerian. Exactly. So why were they not covering the entire perimeters? Mm. And there was this issue of DEI, like diversity and equality problem mm. that they were mainly okay, That aspect, I want you to chip on, say something about that. Okay. Aspect. That is not. Well, since you're that, interested is in not that is not really the problem. Okay. okay. People just pointed that out. It could be men. That could happen too. So those detailing and stuff like that, it slipped out. But kudos to the women that dragged him out. It's also yeah, the women. Kudos. The women that actually dragged him out. Those women, yeah. some women yeah. that yeah. details that yeah, came that to protect, came protect can, yes. I, can I bring a homegrown um, proverb to this international crisis? Sure. Okay. He who brings ant infested firewood should expect um, uh, maggots. Okay. Okay. Or, or lizards. Lizards. Thank you. He who brings ant infested um firewood to the house should expect lizards to come donald trump has been stoking the embers of violence i remember when the democrats kept talking about gun control gun control and they said no everybody should have guns it's part of your fundamental rights and all that and trump i don't know what side you support or not all these issues about oh immigrants they are the ones doing this they are the ones not doing this and all that when you look at the person who did this thing, he's a full white person, yeah. Republican, who have a right to carry the guns. And he was carried it. But the he is. He was a Democrat. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Yeah. At, yeah. At, yeah. at 20 year old. At 17 or so, he made a donation. Could one of those things that, oh, it's like, okay, let me just donate to this mm-hmm. course mm-hmm. and, yeah. and all that. If you're a Republican, it does not mean that everything Democrats you would dislike. Yes, yes. yes. That's That's something you would sure. support. support yeah. He's 20, took his father's gun and went. And everybody's acting as if, oh, two minutes is uh, 20 years. Oh, they did not find this book. JFK was shot. Did he not have Secret Service details? The part that they are introducing DEI is actually derogatory to the women yeah, exactly. because uh, diversity, yeah. equality, and inclusivity, mm-hmm. they're even using it against Kamala Harris that she's a DEI hire. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that it's because wow. it's women, wow. you know, Trump has gone to court and has been made to pay to a woman that he attacked. We're not saying allegedly because it happened. Mm-hmm. He's been asked to pay the woman. So his disdain for women has, has always been there. So um, when we're talking this Trump, um, sorry, the Trump violence and all that and what, um, what happened to him, thank God he survived it. And unfortunately, someone died. Yeah. died. Yeah. 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 There is a point why, yeah, like, yeah. You, like she said, um, vi- no country is immune to violence. All mm-hmm. of us, Edo, the other day, yeah. we yeah. saw yes. what happened. Yes. Yeah. We saw the body the of the policeman mm-hmm. in a truck. Killed by thugs. But who, who raises these thoughts? Mm. Who? It's exactly. politicians. So while we feel bad that this happened to a human being, and we pray that it doesn't that continue, because here. the policeman who died in Inedo uh, the other day with, um, with uh, Shaibu, he has a family. Sure. Yes. And yes. nobody yes. even knows who he's supporting because mm-hmm. he is um, he's a public servant, mm-hmm. you know, he's doing his, his work. 
So, um, yeah, it happened to Trump, but it's happening here. True. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. It's, yeah. it's happening in Kenya, it's happening in Rwanda, it's happening everywhere. So, political violence is something that is here. We hope it doesn't continue. But, like I said, if you bring home ant infested firewood, the lizards, lizards will come as you keep encouraging everyone to just go buy a gun, keep a gun, it's part of your rights. It's bound to happen. Yeah, you know, and the both sides, that gun issue is an issue of both sides, both the Democrats and the Republicans. Republican. But then, since we are speaking about Edu violence, I want to know what's your thoughts on this the problem between uh, Philip Shaibu and Obaseki. You know, he was impeached initially and then he went to court, fought his way through. They said they are going to reinstate him as deputy governor. What's your thoughts on this? The Can I say that politics is Nigeria and uh, the all the dish has become like a joke? Um, as everybody, wait your turn. You will be removed today, be brought back tomorrow. But then it's a political theater. None of these things should really surprise everybody and should not take away uh, our precious time. Again, it is for us to go back and look at the way we practice politics in Nigeria. Nigeria. Who does it benefit? Watching them on TV, or oh, today you're a deputy, tomorrow you're not. Mm. To whose benefit? Mm. What has this got to do with the school children who are out of school? What has it got to do with uh, pensioners who are not getting their money? Mm. People who are not being paid? The bad roads. These people are taking away our attention from it. Shaibu donated cars to the um, APC uh, candidate, um, Bolo, you know? Yes, because, I mean, of course, when uh, PDP hurt him, he decided to support, you know, um, the enemy of my enemy is my That's friend. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so something like that. Okay. So my point is, those cars that were given for that political uh, rallies and campaign, really, would it not benefit the masses? The masses the recycle, yeah. So what they are doing for me is just political theatrics. Okay. Please keep your house, political houses clean, PDP, APC. And because, govern yeah, the people. On, on the okay. yeah. So, yes. on that point, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, um, oh, so we heard on the news, you know, that the federal government sent twenty trucks of rice. Mm -hmm. Can I give them my house address, please? <laughs> yes. Okay. So you know, speaking about that, right? Um, which has raised you know several conversations. Some people have said that in their lifetime, you know, throughout their lifetime, they have never gotten any of these palliatives that have been sent. And then they're, I myself I too. <laughs> so, 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 you too. So, um, there are conversations as to, you know, how sure are we that, you know, these officials that have been put in place, you know, um, would not divert this palliative for personal use. And then again, um, there are also conversations as well as to the fact that, these palliatives or these 20 trucks of rice, you know, it's very com commendable, I would say, but I think what I suggest, I'm of the opinion that we need a permanent, you know, solution to the economy of the country. So, in like a few seconds, uh, let's hear you what you have to say, Bella. <laughs> First of all, I'll say that is more like using ointment to treat cancer because mm. that is not treating the root causes. We have um, food, okay, when we talk about food security, we also talk about security as in security in itself. Yeah. There is the farmer header crisis. Mm. What are you doing about that? Mm -hmm. There is also the issue of advanced farming, like mechanized farming. What are you doing to contribute to your quota as a government to that? Mm -hmm. There's also the issue of access to loans to farmers. Mm -hmm. Some farmers, they are ready to go all out, but they don't have access to money. You understand? So what are you doing mm -hmm. as a state, as a government, mm -hmm. you get to curb all those things, to treat these issues? You understand? So giving 20 bags of rice to each state is more like using, like I said, mm -hmm. using ointment to treat cancer. Treat so it's not going to work rather. in any way. Hmm. Wow. No. Um, Felix. Don't give us fish. <laughs> Teach us how to fish. Exactly. Mm. I, I think we're missing the point because palliative by by its definition, it's something that is temporary. Mm, okay. It's a temporary relief. People mm -hmm. are hungry. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're waiting, how long does it take for rice to grow? Mm -hmm. If you say, okay, let's give them fertilizer and uh, whatever to grow, this, how long does it take to, to grow? grow? Even so pepper, you know, when pepper became 100 naira for mm -hmm. one pepper, I said, please, how long? And they say it takes about three months or four months for pepper to grow and germinate so if mm -hmm. i need to cook am i going to wait for four years of you know agricultural plan and all of that my point is thank you the government for giving the the rice so how do you ensure 
that it gets to the people. Yeah. That is, for me, our primary concern at the moment. Let us not be, let it not go the way of the COVID palliative, where we have disappearing palliative or people appropriating palliatives for their political uh, goodwill. So you get government bags of rice and put your picture on it and share it at your birthday parties and share it at, at uh, your great grandmother's funeral and all this thing. So that for me is the primary concern. Let the government make sure that this palliative gets to the people. Right. That's my that's my concern. Please send one to my house. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. <laughs> We're going on a short break.